Welcome back to another out of the park tutorial video. Today's video, we're going to be talking about evaluating hitters. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the ratings, which you get through your scout if you have scouting on, as well as some of the stats that I use to evaluate hitters. Because again, in out of the park, you want to combine scouting and stats um, to evaluate your players. Because like I've said many times, unless you have scouting accuracy at 100% or turned off, uh, these ratings here are just what your scout thinks of a player. So there can be like a fog of war where your scout misevaluates a player and these ratings are not accurate. Um, you know, you do want to trust your scout uh, to, you know, that's why you want to have a good scout that you can trust, but you also want to mix in stats. Um, if a player continues to under or overachieve kind of what their ratings say, season over season, um, then it's safe to say that that player is probably either under or overrated by your scout. So, Let's get down to it. Uh, before doing so, you know, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe if you like. I do a lot of out of the park content, uh, sims, long term sims, a lot of tutorials. You can also look in the comment, or I'm sorry, the description box of this video for a link to my Patreon. We can get more out of the park video. You can uh, more directly ask me questions. I don't always have time to answer all the comments on these videos. But, anyways, let's start with the ratings. Um, and, you know, I do want to say uh, Out of the Park came out with their own tutorials over the offseason. They were really helpful. Uh, Alex Murray really, um, from Out of the Park, really put uh, phrased these things very well in terms of what these ratings mean. Uh, and some of what I'm saying uh, is borrowed from that because he articulated it, I think, better than I have in my previous tutorial videos. So do be sure to check out the Out of the Park page, too, for their videos. But um, let's start. So with contact, it's it's basically like how good a player is at making contact when they swing. Um, and one thing that I didn't know until Alex made his video is the two main influencers of this are uh, Avoid K's and Babbitt, which is not listed here. It's, uh, it's under the hood in the player editor. Um, and Out of the Park describes Babbitt uh, is how often when a player puts a ball in play, it'll be a hit. Uh, so it's it to me that speaks a little bit to like uh, it factors in not directly but if we think of real life baseball it factors in like exit velocity launch angle like when you make contact how often are your balls uh, how often are your balls in play likely to be a hit well that depends over the long term on the quality of the contact um, so that's kind of how I interpret that um, is is you know it's uh, how often they make contact when they swing, and then the quality of the contact um, when they do make contact. Um, power apparently is also makes a small influence, I think, in an exit velocity kind of way. Uh, but basically, contact is is a super important skill, right? <laughs> I mean, that goes that's obvious. But you have five five categories here. I don't think they're created equal. Um, I think contact is arguably the most important skill. Uh, not that you want to ignore some or all of the others, but contact is hugely, hugely important. You know, I mean, how often do you see sluggers in the minor leagues in real life baseball who, uh, you know, can knock the crap out of the ball and have major league power, um, but they can't make contact, right? They strike out in 40% of the plate appearances, so they're destined to fail. Um, so that's contact. Gap power is one uh, I have always ignored. Honestly, I, don't, well, I wouldn't say ignore it. Um, no, I do. I kind of ignore it. I don't really care about it. You might, um, but it's basically how often a hit turns into a double or a triple. I'm here for on base percentage and uh, home runs. You know, that's, I, I, I much more care about uh, how often my guys are going to put the ball in play, how often they're going to strike out, and how often they're going to hit home runs. Uh, if that if they want to put balls and play that are doubles or triples, that's great. But it's definitely the least important uh, of the five. Well, I shouldn't say least important. It's the one that I pay attention to the least of these five things here. Uh, home run power. Um, that's just how many hits turn into a home run. Uh, if you like sluggers, if you like power hitters, by all means, uh, go go nuts with with the guys you're in for home run power. I'll put it this way: I would be fine with a guy with like an 80 contact and a 20 power. I should say this is a 20 to 80 scale here. Um, 50 being average, you know, 80 contact, 20 power. Sign me up for that guy all day. Uh, 
80 power, 20 contact, uh, going to have a hard time being uh, anything above like a double A player with that. So uh, to kind of put in perspective, so, you know, again, you know, home run power, really important, helps a guy have guys who can hit the ball out of the yard, but they've got to be able to make contact. Um, next up is I. I is kind of like how often a player walks or swings. Um, a player with a lower eye might be more ag aggressive. Think of it that way. A player with a higher eye or higher eye rating is kind of more selective. They'll see more pitches. Um, I actually, I started emphasizing this one less, I think, after Alex's video um, when he put it in the context of avoid K. Um, you know, I care less about I and discipline now. Um, you know, contact, home run power, and avoid Ks are definitely the big three. They've always been the big three. It's why, like, in your default, I think in the draft uh, and on the trade screen, like, these are the three that you see because those are the three you should care about the most. Um, next up is avoid Ks. This is basically just how often a player strikes out. Um, if they have a higher avoid Ks, they'll put more balls in play. Um, now, where do I value it? Mm, uh, I'd say probably, you know, contact... I think is probably number one and like one B and one C or, or two A and two B are home run power and avoid case. Now it doesn't mean like, I don't care. You know, I, I would prefer for a guy to have high gap power and high eye or discipline, but it's, it's not going to be a deciding factor, like on a draft choice, right? Like if I've got a guy with high contact and high power and there's another guy who only beats him out with gap, gap power and eye discipline, I'm not going to care about that. I'm not going to make like a draft decision off of a gap power and an eye discipline. But I guess if everything was equal except the gap power, uh, sure, it's a fine tiebreaker. Um, so those are those are the ratings um, here in terms of the batting, uh, batting ratings, scouting. Uh, I'm going to get I'm, I'll, I'll talk about the other batting ratings at the end. I want to get into some of the stats that I use. You can see I've created a custom stat row here, which I have a tutorial video on how to do. Um, and so the if you know if you want to focus on one stat to evaluate a hit, your hitters, I suggest going with WRC plus or if it's more intu intuitive for you, OPS plus. Uh, essentially what this tells you is how good a player is relative to league average. Uh, normally these numbers are way more similar. This is a very small sample of 16 plate appearances. Normally WRC plus and OPS plus will be within like five to 10 points of each other. Not, not, se so not, uh, excuse me, separated by like 50 points like they are here. It's just an early season thing in the sim I'm messing around on. Uh, so basically, you know, let's do OPS plus because I think OPS is a more intuitive thing to people. I prefer WRC plus, but I keep them both here um, because, again, I think OPS plus is more intuitive because people understand what more what OPS is. Of course, being on base plus slugging, I think baseball is at a point now where most fans recognize the value of um, on base percentage and slugging percentage. So basically what this does is it takes your OPS uh and it normalizes it to the league average. So 100 OPS plus is a league average. And the good thing about this is it adjusts for park and it adjusts for era. So, you know, while like a, you know, a 400 OBP in one era, I mean, it's this, this is an exaggerated example. It would never be this exaggerated, but, you know, maybe in some era, an on-base percentage of 400 is terrible. And in another era, it like leads the league, right? I mean, you can look at that with slugging percentage. Look at the slugging percentages in Major League Baseball now compared to some other eras. That's why normalizing it to the era is great. Looking at a raw slugging percentage, sure, it's good, but you need to know about the run environment you're playing in to make sense of it. Like a, a 615, maybe in the year uh, 2461, that's going to be the worst slugging percentage in the league. And maybe uh, in the year 3,063, it's going to be the best slugging percentage in the league because of like the the uh, the run environment, right? So these plus stats are just so helpful with that. Uh, I would highly recommend, uh, you know, wrapping your brain around the plus stats if you don't want to use them because they just add so much context that no other stat. Uh, really does. Um, again, I prefer WRC+. Plus. I won't get into the nitty-gritty of that um, if you don't know what it is. I would recommend Fangraph's um, Sabermetric Library if you want to check it out. Um, but if you're familiar with um, 
OBP and slugging percentage, OPS, which is on base plus slugging, um, then just do OPS plus. It works fine. Um, the other stats that I pay attention to uh, pretty heavily are walk and strikeout percentage. Now, this is another thing where it's really dependent on your league and your era. You know, strikeout percentages you know, used to be unplayable if you struck out 30 to 35 percent of the time. Now, in today's major league, there are plenty of good players to do it. Uh, the quality of the contact that they're making when they don't strike out is phenomenal. Or, or, you know, we also value walks more now than we used to. Thanks, Billy Bean. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I think basically one of the plus stats plus strikeout and walk percentage are the three primary indicators for me for how a player's doing. Um, one stat that I don't have on here because I just built this in Out of the Park 23, uh, this my new dashboard, is BABIP. Um, BABIP can help you tell uh, if a player, and just so in case you guys are wondering how you do this, you make a new row and you move it to the top. So see how I moved it up? Um, so let's go in here and, I, you know, this is the menu that comes up and I'm going to add BABIP and I'm going to put it at the end. Cool. So, and you see, this is my top row. So here's BABIP. So basically, uh, Cedric Mullins over, you know, he's a career 306 BABIP guy, but a couple outliers, it looks like in his last two seasons, you know, he's somewhere in the mid three, 300s, uh, 330s maybe for BABIP. Um, so what this can tell you is, is the guy's run that he's on sustainable? And you, uh, the league average for BABIP is normally 300, but uh, guys, I would say pay, if you have a new rookie, maybe, you know, look, like look for extreme outliers, like a 118 uh, or a 500 BABIP. Like he's either 118 BABIP, he's having really bad luck on balls in play. BABIP, by the way, is batting average on balls in play, in case you didn't know. A 500 BABIP is nobody ever sustains that over the course of a season. But, you know, maybe Cedric Mullins is going to be a 340 BABIP guy for his career. He's faster, he hits a ball on the ground maybe, uh, you know, who knows? So you want to evaluate if your hitter is being, having just really good luck or sustainable success. BABIP is one of the ways to do that in this game. Unfortunately, you know, we don't have uh, batted ball data with like exit velocity and all that. So BABIP is just kind of our proxy uh, for batted ball data. Uh, again, it's just kind of like, you know, he's not going to keep up a 500. He's had extremely good luck with this 385 average so far. He's not going to continue uh, to bat 385, and that's because his BABIP will come down. He will put balls in play uh, that turn into outs more often than the rest of the season. So that's a kind of brief overview of how to evaluate hitters. Again, look at contact, home run power, avoid Ks. Look at one of these plus stats uh, to see how they're doing relative to the league. Strikeouts and walks are important. Um, and then to evaluate their luck, look at BABIP. Um, if you have, uh, you know, if you have any feelings about this, you're, you're welcome to leave in the comments. Um, I will say real quick on the other batter batting ratings, I don't pay a ton, ton of attention to this, but I prefer to avoid ground ball hitters. He's a normal, you'll get, I think you have normal ground ball, line drive, fly ball. I prefer to avoid ground ball, but it's not like I won't acquire a ground ball hitter. Like if he's a good hitter, it's fine. Uh, if his batted ball profile is like uh, ground balls. Uh, but uh, definitely prefer fly ball or line drive when possible. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching and I will be back with more videos, more tutorials uh, in the coming days and I will talk to you then. Thanks. Bye.